Phantom Motor Traffic, Tango, Oscar Romeo is lining up and rolling 2-8. All set to go. We're uh, looking forward to it. So we're looking for intense. Yeah, let's go. Oh, Come I'm on. Not <laughs> Beef not it up. Too intense. Give it up. We'll be intense. You I'll promised me you're a sporty person. We'll be very intense soon. I don't yep. want to get too tired. <laughs> yes, he's our very own Top Gun, Matamata bass rider Craig Grills and his energetic sister Bridget, who we have cheekily described as top fun. Both unquestionably have entered their expected career paths through the love of racing. You see there are names and families synonymous with New Zealand racing. Names that have created a history, names that have left a legacy. The name Grills is one such name, easily recognisable and on Craig and Bridget's father's side goes back two generations, father Gary and grandfather Johnny. But remarkably, on mother's side, Lee, knee caddy, it goes back five generations. So I guess if the thoroughbred bug is so ingrained in your DNA, did Craig and Bridget really get a choice? It seemed appropriate that we enter Craig's man cave, invite Dad Gary and Mum Lee over from their Te Awamutu base, and with sister Bridget, wife Milu, have a chuckle and a reminisce about days gone by. Family photos, well Lee has found some beauties. Here, a multitasking dad with Bridget. I know. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that not the best photo you've seen of all the time? Very PC these exactly. days. <laughs> I don't know if you get away with that so much these days. How to train your son to become a jockey. Well, this is where Probably Craig learned how to ride. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly. at a sports day up by car. Yeah. yeah. It was clear farm life with animals, horses, calves, lambs, and did I mention horses, were a grill's family way of life right from day one. Even Gonzo, described as a temperamental Shetland pony with attitude and a tendency to bolt, can claim fame to teaching both Craig and Bridget a bit of stickability. The Grills and McDonald's kids at play. From Dad's recollection, this is J-Mac being outridden by Bridget at their local hunt. Have you ever seen someone who's won so many medals and <laughs> not so smile yeah, face? Because <laughs> <really happy. laughs> there's a blue ribbon in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's Rob. Blue's bad. I've been robbed, I reckon. <laughs> She's all that happy lady. Don't think, think she liked getting a photo taken. No. Much. No, in the cup. Same things <laughs> haven't changed really. And we're actually trying to work out who's got the most ribbons in the household between the, the, the son and daughter. And I think that proves quite clearly that Craig's winning that stakes. There's yeah, a lot of ribbons there. The, there's only one red one there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so no, the, it's and another no, the quality of the ribbon. <laughs> no, no. no wide sashes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Obviously a wee bit of competition between everybody. Of course Bridget's involved as well. But yeah, there's a significant day where uh, I think you wrote a couple of winners on the programme. They were nose margins and the runner-up was none other than your son. Uh, yeah, twice. yeah, where was it? A pyro, was it? Oh, yeah, it was. was it pyro? <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pyro. yeah. Well, he'll, um, he remembers it. Oh, OK, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. Father being son. Twice. Yeah. Two a, noses. It was a pretty quiet trip home. <laughs> <laughs> and how about this prize grills racing family memorabilia? The time-honoured Great Easter Handicap at Ellerslie, won by the three Grills generations. Johnny Grills on Kia Maria in 1972. Craig Grills on Past to Post in 2008. Gary Grills on Cosmetique in 1986. And it annoyed me I couldn't get Gary to skite about this performance, winning the local sulky race, defeating commentating legend George Simon, Craig and great family friend Mark Boot Sweeney. Gee, George would have done that tough. Gold. Oh, Craig, you must have uh, just about you with Dad involved in the races as well. It was part and parcel of your life, really, to be fair. Yeah, I suppose so. Starting off, um, yeah, good to have that bit of a helping hand. You know, probably more so than some of the other jockeys probably would. But yeah, um, yeah it's de definitely an advantage, I suppose. Yeah. And I'm not sure you had a choice, Bridget, to tell <laughs> choice whether you're, we're going to become a jockey or not, or? No, I just, he obviously rode 
the show jumpers and that for a long time and I finished school and was writing track work before school and that, it was good money and I went to uni for a year and decided I didn't want a student loan, I'd rather earn money. Yeah, yeah cool. And um, yeah, I just really enjoyed riding horses, as yeah. cheesy as that sounds. And yeah. yeah. Just like brother Craig, seven years previous, winning on Prince Cheetak for Sid Evans, Bridget recorded her first winning ride on her third race day ride. Princess Lincoln at Wanganui for trainer Lisa Latter. But Princess Lincoln's in front here, race favourite Bridget Grills, and she's going to get the first win of her career very early in the piece. Beautiful ride, well done, won it by about seven lengths. So this will be a special occasion for Bridget Grills, and I see mum and dad uh, in attendance here today, so that'll be terrific. And here's Bridget Grills from a great family, Bevan, and the name will continue. And uh, yeah, well done to her with Lisa Latter here and Princess Lincoln. In Bridget, a grills joins a long list of grills to ride a race day. One of mum and dad are here. I've seen uh, Gary, so that'll make it all the more special. I suppose it's a major thrill to give Bridget her first winner as well, Lisa. Yeah, definitely. I really wanted her to ride her first winner on one of mine. Um, she's worked hard to get to where she is, and um, she, she rides really well. She gets down nice and low in the saddle, and um, she's from a from a racing family, and um, she should have every chance. This must be a great thrill to join a massive list of girls that have ridden a, a race day winner. Yeah, very exciting. <laughs> and to have mum and dad here as well, that must make it all the more special. Yeah, makes it pretty special. Good they came down. Look, you, you went to Manawatu to go to university, found it's not for you, and now you've taken on the race riding game like mum, uh, like dad. Yeah, yeah, no, really enjoying it. Congratulations. It wasn't my go. <laughs> Congratulations, well done. Thank you. There we have it, Bridget to Grills, who rides home her first to win up mum and dad, beaming, beaming here, uh, DA, as they watch Bridget. A ride home here first winner. You've got Craig, you've got Gary, you've got a granddad, I believe, as well. It's a famous name in these uh, racing ranks here in New Zealand. So, early days, both loved your horses. I see a lot of you two with ponies. Yeah, no, yeah, we got into ponies pretty young. Um, we both did a lot of, quite a lot of show jumping, and then when Craig turned 15, he became an apprentice, so he gave up the ponies. But I, I went on till I was about 17, 18, so. Yeah. So while there was two years difference, did you compete at show jumping events? No, together? no, he was always a little bit above yeah. me and then... Did he skyder much when he came back with his ribbons and stuff? No, nah, no, he always had a cheeky rail, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have got a few more ribbons than him. <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> now we're talking. I knew that would be the case, Bridget. <laughs> right, go hard, please. You're hard us. Come on. <laughs> Gulzy, I've just got to clear up one huge matter. Uh, from all information we've gathered so far, and we haven't done a lot of research to be fair into it, but Bridget assures me that she's got the most ribbons in show jumping than you have. Now, can you confirm or deny? Are you prepared to say that I, is correct? I can confirm that, but I'm going to say probably because she just did it for a lot longer than me. <laughs> Remind, where did your apprenticeship start out at? Remind me. Uh, Te Amaru with Graham Sanders. Oh, yep. Um, when I was probably like 13, 14, um, during the school holidays, I used to go actually ride work for Richard Otto, first round of their home track, and then, um, and then sort of Dad was riding a lot for Graham. Well, he was a stable rider for many, many years, but um, he ended up being apprentice to, to Graham. So, yep. yep. You'd end up good mates with Boots Sweeney, I suppose? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Boots, he's a legend. Um, yep. Used to travel to the races a lot and obviously ride work together and, and things like that, but yep. um, yeah, no. Sold to the earth bloke, old Bootsy. Yes. Can sing a good song. The Gambler, I think, was his yeah. go to <laughs> song with the racing riders' dinners, if you remember those ones. Oh, I've never been to them, but I have heard the stories, yeah. 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 No, he was very good, and very good at that. Well, I mean, we've just had a funny wheel experience, you know. Um, I was going to call it Jasmine Fawcett, because Tegan Newman's been out here playing the act with us a wee bit. Yeah. You know, we can talk to cousins and friends and just feel like, look, she's having another crack, and here's Sam Spratt. <laughs> look at this. I mean, this is, yeah. this is so New Zealand, really, which I yeah. really love. It is, yeah. But well, look at it. No, oh, I just yeah. love this. We just, in the jockey's room, we're just one big happy family, yeah. really, and it's good, like, you get to go to work every day with your mates. That's and right. That's the greatest thing about it. Sure. Yeah. But you've got to have game on when you're that horse. Oh, yeah. Once yeah. you get on your horse's back or walk out that door, yeah. Yeah. you're thinking about what you're doing, you're not thinking about anybody else. Yeah. And, yeah, we're all very competitive, so. Yeah. Now my understanding is that romance blossomed early for these two as Milu, an amateur rider from Sweden, crossed paths at the Matamata track with our Craig. 
you had it, the opportunity to come to New Zealand for you personally? Um, so everyone went on like OE trips and yeah, so me and my friend, um, we went down to Australia where I worked for Mike Maroney and yeah, got the opportunity to come over here and see New Zealand and then do the Brisbane Carnival and yeah, just really like the quality of life that the horses had here and I like the country, country life so yeah, they offered me a job, they were happy I wanted to come back and yeah, and then I met Craig for a year. So you're just riding beside later. each other? Or <laughs> I wanted to sort of picture the picture here, yeah? so you're riding a horse at it, met him at a race course, so yep. that works. Yeah, that's Craig's right. riding a horse at Madame at a race. Who looked at who first? Oh gosh. She looked at me first. How are you going? How are you going? No, well we had a couple of friends who were trying to set us up for a while. Oh. Yeah. Matchmaking already? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess it worked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you're they disappointed in their decision, their, their, suge their suggestions. <laughs> He's not bad, is he? No. no. <laughs> so their matchmakers can take a bow as Craig and Milu tied the knot in 2016. Craig really enjoyed a successful 18-month stint riding in Singapore from 2017. Not only did he gain first-hand experience on a poly track, but he tested himself against quality international riders. Side of the line, they stand. Racing in the fourth, he got him in a good line, over to top a little bit slow. Tiger Force ridden along with a whip early, and Irving Lipschitz is going to go and lead them off, and he shows good early speed, Irving, to get into the first turn and lead the way. From Ordos Legend in second, that's a canny bit of riding from Craig Grills. Grills now says go on Irving Lipschitz, but he's turned Ordos Legend away in second. They're clear of the running home military chairman, but he's got stamina all right. Irving Lipschitz, too good. Breaks the maiden, winner 65 for free. Back home only three months, Craig Grills on the Stephen Marsh train, Crown Prosecutor, surprisingly putting the New Zealand Derby field of 2019 under lock and key. Crown Prosecutor in the twinkling, surely Sacred is coming after them, but it's Crown Prosecutor in the twinkling fighting out the Derby. Crown Prosecutor in the twinkling, Crown Prosecutor, Stephen Marsh gets the Derby, Crown Prosecutor won it. His father did it. A few years ago now with Hale, and now Stephen Marsh has trained the winner of the Vodafone New Zealand Derby, and Craig Grills just back from Singapore, and they've combined to win the Derby with the son of the Dagli Doro. Sure. Have you seen a change from you? I mean, we all say we're mature, obviously, but as the Craig Grills who started up in the racing industry, has there been much change? I mean, there's been a lot of international experience, a lot of water's gone under the bridge. Talk me through the Craig Grills early, the Craig Grills we've got today. Um, yeah, I suppose so. Um, I think I'm a lot more relaxed, well, not relaxed, but um, I don't get as uptight about things as I might maybe used to. I probably don't think things as much as I used to when I was. Apprentice and just out of my time. Um, you know, you get taken off a horse, you used to get a bit down about it and get a bit upset and stuff like that. And now it's, I kind of just realise if that does happen, it's just, it's just, it's racing basically. So, a um, couple of years in Singapore was a really sort of benefited me, I feel. Um, I don't know how, I don't really, like, it's hard to explain how it really benefited me, but I, I feel I came back a lot, a, lot, a lot better rider coming back from there. Um, just thinking things in a different way and yeah, it was just a good experience. Like I said, it's hard to explain kind of how it made me a better rider, I'm not sure, but I feel it definitely did. Yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely definitely a mind game too. Um, there's a lot going on in a, on a race day and you know, especially in a big race, there's a lot of pressure and things like that. And I've actually probably found in the last last few years, riding in a big race I'm probably, is probably when I'm actually at my most, most relaxed sometimes. Um, maybe zone out, I don't know what it is, but yeah, so, so I probably just feel like I take it in my stride a lot better than I thought I probably used to when I was younger. Two years later, the Derby became Hot Grills property again on a very strange day at Auckland Racing Club's headquarters with no crowd due to COVID. But this time, Craig was expected to win on the favourite. On late, but down to the 200 metres, Rocket Spade, Frontman, Milford. These are the three, I think, that are going to fight out the derby. Rocket Spade's just in front. Rocket Spade, Milford and Frontman. Rocket Spade won the derby. The favourites delivered. Number one, Rocket Spade. And Craig Grills, who was last on the favourite at the 650 metre mark, was able to come between runners, and that was definitely the winning of the race. Oh, that was that was unbelievable. Um, so wrapped to get a race like the Derby for Lance and Scotty, because throughout my career they've been probably one of my biggest supporters. So 
Auckland put the trust in me and I've rode the horse, so I'm, I'm absolutely stoked, so. Yeah, we, we, we regard Lance as a benchmark of jockeys, don't we? And for, for you to be winning one for him when he hadn't been able to win one before in his trainer's role, it must be pretty satisfying. It is, yeah, like you say, Lance has been the benchmark of jockeys. He's right from when I was probably in my early 20s when I moved to Matter Matter, he started helping me and I think I've got a lot to thank for him, so also of my riding, but also of the horses that put me on for training. So I've, it's been good to win a lot of good races for them. And also thank you to the owners, um, Hermitage, you know, I've had a few good winners for them. So it's um, great to get this for them. Brother and sister are certainly enjoying competing together again after both having stints overseas. I find coming to the races in New Zealand, it's a bit more family orientated and a lot of people have been around, around the tracks, you know, like our families and they've got the collets and which is pretty amazing for some places. So, yeah, a lot of us have grown up in the industry and you always see a friendly face in the races and I, I really enjoy that aspect of it all. In terms of lifestyles, well, Craig is probably the more considered, while Bridget, you'd got to applaud as she lives life to the fullest, mixing essential pleasure with her business. Right from a very young age, Craig's day was consumed by constructing and deconstructing model aeroplanes. So it was inevitable he would one day become a pilot. It's a night, so it's a 1967, is it? It yeah. is, yep, yep, she's an old girl, yep. yep. Cessna? Is it Cessna, yeah, Cessna 172. Cessna. Yep. And how long have you had it? I've had it probably two and a half years. Yep. Yeah, yep. One of your better ones you've had in your time? Yeah, yep. yep. I've done quite a bit of time, time in it now. Um, Probably done nearly 200 hours in it, so. 200 hours doesn't sound a lot. Doesn't sound a lot, but um, as you'll see, when you go up for a 20 minute flight, it's you know. 201 hours. Yeah, out. yeah, Has yeah. Has got a name? Do you call it a pet name at all? No, it hasn't. No. Rego's T-O-R, so yeah. Tory, maybe. Tory? Okay. <laughs> let's, let's go up and Tory. And let's do it. Sweet. We don't have to do this, do nah, we? No, no. <laughs> you can if you want. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fixed up my door, didn't you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, cruising, that was so smooth. Are we up a wee bit? Yep, we're flying. Oh, you little bitch. It was smooth as. Just getting it back on the ground's the hard part. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the neat thing, Rosie, is you've sort of, but you took your wife around the South Island, didn't you? On, on your plane. Yeah, we went around, and that's when I was suspended during um, uh, Auckland Cup Week. I went down to Christchurch, Kaikoura. Um, uh, where else did we go? Pākehā. Yeah, it was really good. Good way to get around the country. For sure. It's Pete and Jess Brosnan's place down there. They've got that set of jumps around the track there. Oh, yeah. yeah a bit of a jumping school there. Oh, yeah. There's actually one going over around the track now. Yeah. It's all Waikato stud down here. Oh, really? Yeah, well, here's the um, main part of the farm. Ground's comfortable, not feeling motion sickness or anything. All good. You all right? Are you all right, Zeki? I don't know if you can hear us. No. Yep. This amazing, well, it doesn't amaze me, it doesn't surprise me at all, Gluzy, but it's such a big thing for us, you know, to go get up in a plane, but for you it's sort of a day to day yeah. process, and it's just all cool, calm, and collective as you are on a 24 7 basis, really. <laughs> oh, I enjoy it though, it's my, it's my let down away from racing too, it's sort of, oh, how do you explain it, sort of, you don't really think, think about too much else when you're doing this, it's, it's quite good. No. Quite nice on a Sunday though, like on a, if the weather's good, um, go up the Coromandel Coast, Pawanui and stuff like that, there's an airfield in the middle of the town, and park up there, go for a bit of lunch, something like that, yeah. come home. Yeah. It's about a two and a half hour drive, it takes about 40 minutes to get here in this. Perfect. It's good. Yeah. Put the, dog, put, put the dogs in the back a couple of yeah. times and <laughs> get off. Perfect. Traffic can go off to Romeo's uh, long finals on zero. Full stop. Back on Terra Firma. Yeah, no, well done, Grilzy. Sensational. Muchly appreciated. Not a bother. And how about this? A social media post from the grill's neighbour, Mr Phil Jones. A photo of Craig as a three-year-old, 
who had pedalled his tricycle down the road to ask Mr Jones if he would mind taking him for a flyer in his aeroplane. Then some 27 years later, in an identical make of aircraft, Craig returns the favour and takes Mr Jones for a flight in his aeroplane. Gold. The Grills racing legacy is certainly still very much in full swing. Grandfather Johnny retired from race riding at 50, having amassed 700 winners. Dad Gary retired at 44 with 1,250 New Zealand winners, while Bridget is close to milestones on both sides of the Tasman. Craig is so close to joining the elite club in New Zealand of riding 1,000 winners himself. Those family figures amassed to well over 3,000 winners by the Grills family on New Zealand racetracks, an incredible family achievement. To the Grills family, we salute you all for services to New Zealand racing. Great to catch up, it's a, it's a neat story. I mean, you must too must be very proud that the names keep going. Bridget and Craig are going really well. You know, they're safe, they're happy, they're healthy. Pretty cool. Oh, you yeah, couldn't, yeah. couldn't be more proud of you. Yeah. So, yeah, no. Hope it continues, yeah. So, well, I'm sure it will. Brilliant. We must have done something right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Gary and Lee, especially Lee, for sneakily supplying those family photos, to Craig and Milu, and of course Bridget. There is no more respected name in thoroughbred racing than Grills. Thanks for joining us on For the Love of Racing as our thoroughbred people tell their thoroughbred stories. Hare ra.